Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, your Planetary Defense Commander, Star-Lord Thor 7 And even though I've gotten a bunch of death threats and been under attack, I'm still alive on my birthday. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Mona, Wim, Laura, Yvonne, Lynn, Mike, Kenneth, Athena, and Mom. For your birthday presents, I really, 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 really appreciate it. And I appreciate feeling appreciated. Though technically, I almost killed myself last night. I had four beers and a bunch of candy and, and almost got like instant diabetes and woke up like, whoa, dude, you need to dial it back on the candy, bro. You're not a spring chicken no more. All right, let's get to the important stuff that deals with your life, your family, and your future. The Weather Channel is talking about Earth's magnetic North Pole shifting quickly. This has been a topic we've discussed many times <clears throat> at Thor News, and it's a topic scientists rarely discuss. The Truth Community has talked about a lot, though, though, but we don't work together very well. Earth's magnetic North Pole is shifting quickly, and it's weirdly unexpected. How about a magnetic pole tax? It's been moving at a rate of 35 miles a year towards Siberia. The pace is so fast, scientists were forced to update the world magnetic model a year early. The model guides the navigation in our ships, planes, even the GPS in our phones. Yeah, GPS, it's real. The magnetic pole switch places every several hundred thousands of years. Look at the star inside of our planet. It's like a sun. It isn't harmful to living things, but it does affect compasses and navigational systems. <clears throat> and you can see the weather shifting across our world. Yeah, it's crazy times, man. And I want to remind people, not only has the sun been acting weird since 2012, we are in a deep solar minimum, and we live in a star field, man. We are surrounded by stars, and technically you could call Jupiter the sun's binary companion if you want to. I do it all the time. Ladies love it. And so, there are a lot of factors that go into our, our Earth, our magnetic core, and our magnetic field. It would be best for us to stop arguing and to work together to figure out how to adapt to this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with a ring of fire solar eclipse that is coming up on the 26th, only seven days away. Is a millions of people are about to see a ring of fire in the daytime sky. It's an annular solar eclipse. On December 26th, the moon will pass directly in front of the sun, not quite covering its entire solar disk. The path of annularity cuts across Saudi Arabia, India, Indonesia, and Guam, among other places. So combine that with the Earth getting hit by a constant stream of solar wind, and we have high factors for earthquakes and volcanoes, plus gas giants on the same side, over the next last two weeks of the year, and definitely through 2023. Northern Lights at 34,000 feet. The Earth has been getting hit with a constant stream of solar activity, which I believe goes into the Earth at the core, and then it, I mean, goes into the uh, what are they called? The auroras at the top and the bottom, and they feed it, and then that is what causes the star inside of our sun to grow, causing volcanoes, earthquakes, and such. Science disagrees, but science is more about making money, dude. I don't know if you knew that. So, and and they. Just like the media, they tell you what they're told to tell you. All right. So speaking of earthquakes, we had a second 4.0 earthquake. I have us on a super high red alert through the end of the month because of these total solar eclipses. The gas giants on the same side. And so we've been seeing the heavier earthquake action happening near New Zealand where the volcano erupted killing people. Japan. And Iberia, check out this weird 5-5 five, five earthquake in Africa. That don't make no sense, dude. It's like not even at, by any ring of fire, and it's right in the middle. Um, Italy's been getting a lot of activity, but with a 5 in Alaska and then a 5 down in Guatemala by the Kalima volcano, we are definitely keeping our eye on the West Coast as we get closer to the eclipse. I would recommend... Checking out Dutch Sins and Suspicious Observers. 
Dutch is great at earthquakes. Suspicious Observer is pretty good, um, though he's not necessarily the best friend in the world. Asterisk. Okay. So, we're staying on top of things. I'm giving Cranky Weatherman, Cranky Weather Guy, the King of Weather Twitter, though he's been on vacation for like a month, the award for Best Weatherman on the Planet for 2019, hands down. And Popocatépetl, the volcano in Mexico, the award for Most Active Volcano of the Year, where it's had some type of emission, eruption, earthquake, uh, gas, expulsion, every single day. And this is along the Ring of Fire, just south of California, which will be a nice segue into our uh, atmospheric river we got coming. We got wave after wave patterns of wet weather coming into the upper northwest and a system over Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina that we will be monitoring over the next few days. Uh, models have wavered back and forth with the intensity of both the systems. Some of the models have shown some pretty wet and nasty weather for the upper northwest and then some pretty nasty weather for the southeast. Now, we get the atmospheric, notice how it sprays straight in like a hose, like a fireman is putting out fires up in the northeast, which is what they call an atmospheric river. Now, check out our low, and it looks like our atmospheric defense team blasts it into two, which would keep it from developing. And just weirdly enough, it's going over the Crystal River spot um, we had talked about in October. And what if they blast it apart to Category 5, and so it just keeps coming back as like Category nothings? That's good, right? But it does look like heavy rain for Florida. You guys can handle it. I mean, Florida man lives there. And although sometimes Florida man screws up. Was it that joke? It's not going anywhere. Did I mention I got instant diabetes? Okay, so that's going to bring some pretty wet weather to the southeast. The 21st. 22nd. 23rd. So that's going to be a pretty rainy event. And then you can see the uh, the upper northwest is just going to be getting hit again and again and again and again and again and again and again. How far deep down does the moisture go into Southern California? We'll keep watching out. The models keep trending on it. And as I've told you many times, uh, the models tend to get the their predictions pretty wrong near eclipses. And so five days before, five days after, expect the models to be pretty wonky. But I would keep our eye on all of these systems, definitely with everything going on. In 2019, I'd expect some type of a big Mother Earth surprise. We've got Solstice coming up on the 22nd. Now we're checking the other side of the world, the West Pacific, where the eclipse will be going over. And you can see a cyclone typhoon that will be going through the Philippines uh, in the near future, in about a week. You missed it, it'll come back. And that will be the exact spot that the eclipse will be going over in its totality. Notice how you got two cyclonic things heading towards the Philippines. The exact spot right there, boom. So you get this heading east to west, and then this heading west to east. You got two flows. And that looks like a pretty nasty storm that'll probably end up in the United States. But nothing too super wowsy. But, like I said, we'll have to wait until the eclipse gets here. Strong storms boost California snowpack to highest December level since 2015. And usually I freak out about the dam levels because they get pretty high in California. But after seven years, I realized <clears throat> Nestle just lets them get really high and then they drain them down and then they bottle the water and resell it to people at like five bucks a pop. It's kind of like Chinatown, Jack Nicholson, but different. Hey, guess what? For the second day in a row, Australia shattered its record hottest day and it may do so again this week. It's got a major wildfire problem, almost worse than ever. And last year, I noted at the end of the year that we need to watch out for a volcano eruption in Australia and New Zealand. 
because the ground was just heating up for no damn reason. Everybody's been enjoying the winter weather, I hope. Because you can always go inside, light a fire, have some eggnog, snuggle, kiss, cuddle, play board games. If you're ready for it, you know what I'm saying? It's always best to be ready for things. These ducks were like, hell no, duck that shiz. And they head back in. It's so cute. Oh, great. Now it looks like the moon could electrocute astro astronauts too. First Nazis on the moon. Then you got like microscopic bugs that'll eat your face off. And then you'll get electrocuted. Bring back the space shuttle, Frazier. You got round three of rain moving on the United Kingdom. Ian Livingston of Team Jet Weirding is in pretty good agreement. Thursday is a contender for the first day staying at or below freezing. And this DC winter, which is today. Is anyone else delighted by the idea of cotton candy taco planets? I am. I am. Do you know what I think may kill me? A lack of attention and affection. But I'm a survivor. I just sounded wimpy there. So yeah, southeast, stay on top of it. Because you have a flood risk increasing for the southeastern U.S. Sunday into Monday as a strong storm develops and drops heavy rain, gusty winds across the region. Several inches of rain are expected. Our flood risk index showing a moderate to high chance of flooding across Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. Looks like Georgia's going to say dry. Asterisk. But yeah, look at spread out, dude. And the legend lets you know. Five to six inches is possible for Georgia. I don't think I've ever met her, but she's cute. Eddie Murphy says all 10 of his kids are coming to see him host SNL this weekend, and I'm excited about it. Eddie Murphy is definitely one of my favorite comedians and actors and cool dudes of all time. And so I'm wishing y'all a beautiful day, a beautiful my birthday, a beautiful Christmas, and a beautiful New Year. So yeah, there's your thumbnail. There's your situation. Some pretty heavy rain for a lot of states, with the worst coming to Georgia, South Carolina, parts of California, Oregon, and Washington. So, everybody stay cool and try and be as hilarious as possible. Plus, if you would like to send me a birthday gift, my PayPal and Cash App seem to be working. Yeah, I don't know. Um... Uh, or you can send me a letter, T. Lewis in 5430, Birdwood Road, number 416, Houston, Texas, 77096, www.paypal.me, Thor News, and Space Cowboy 2017 at Gmail is the email that you should be connecting with. Got a Venmo, a Cash App, and a Patron. Once again, thank you very much to Laura Yvonne. She definitely got me enough to get Chinese food if I could eat food today, which I have not because I ate too much candy. Did I mention that? Thank you, Mona, Win, Lynn, for all your love and amazing cards. Mike, for all your support. Kenneth, Athena, you guys have been consistently amazing. And Mom, you're the best mom a kid could ever ask for. I mean, you know, I could have been Planetary Defense Commander and the coolest man on the planet without you. So, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Astro Fight Club, the Astonishers, and even my haters and hackers. You've made me so much cooler. If you go back to listen to my videos from 2013, I'm way cooler than I was now than I was then. All right, so let's try to have more fun next year, okay? That's what the world needs. More fun, more comedy, more romance. Stay cool. God bless everyone.